What's going on guys, it's JSGC here and we are here for the West Ham away preview. So in this game, it's very intense for West Ham, it's not as important for Man City in my opinion, but for West Ham, very important. They're still fighting for the lives, they're not safe just yet. You feel like another win and they'll probably be there, they've got a 1 in 4 chance of, of going for that win. This is a perfect game for them because they're at home, they've got a team that's already won the Premier League, the competitive edge isn't really there and Man City's only motivation is just for the will to want to win. So for every team that's facing Man City, it's always a good time to be facing Man City. The problem problem though that West Ham have is that Man City, because the pressure is no longer there, the players, particularly for strong teams put out, they've got the freedom to go and do whatever they like and you end up with a result like Swansea which has been one of our best results of the season where we just pick them apart. So West Ham, they need to be very careful in this game, they're always at an advantage in my opinion because they've got no Joe Hart in net for this game, it'll be Adrian because Joe Hart's on loan from Man City. Adrian, if you remember last time at the Etihad Stadium, even though we won, ended up having a very good game and taking Joe Hart out of the equation for the West Ham number one goalkeeper for the time being. And Joe Hart can't afford for such a thing to happen again. Because the World Cup's looming, he needs to be playing every single game. He won't be able to play in this game. And so if Adrian ends up having a good game, Joe Hart's in a perilous situation. Joe Hart, he's got an error or two in him. He can be exposed. He has been exposed just in the last game. Him and Rice, they ended up combining and both of them at fault and ended up leading to a goal. So with Adrian there, um, you know, uh, it's something new. It's something fresh. It could always pave the way for it being a little bit better for West Ham, in my opinion. So for us, it's a bit concerning that... Uh, you know, the West Ham normal team won't be out there. Never mind, we've got to get on with it. For City, I'm expecting for us to go with another strong 11. There'll be a couple of players here and there that'll end up having a rest and playing in the next game, like we saw in the last game against Swansea. I was expecting wholesale changes. I'm not too sure when that's going to come. Perhaps uh, if we end up winning our next two games and breaking that record, maybe we'll then we'll start seeing uh, four or five changes per game rather than the two or three that we saw. I really do not know. Uh, so I'm expecting probably to see maybe Kyle Walker return, maybe Fabian Delph uh, in the squad too, um, possibly Fernandinho returning too, since he's just come back from suspension, he's available for this game. Uh, and up front, obviously, Sergio Aguero won't be able to play, so that's always a bonus for West Ham. Uh, so I imagine we'll be seeing Gabriel Jesus again up front for Man City, and then just take your pick from the rest. I'll be popping up my uh, team prediction very soon, but first I just wanted to go through what I think is going to happen in the game. The pitch is nice and big at the uh, London City Stadium. I nearly called it the Olympic Stadium, the London City Stadium. It suits Man City. We've played West Ham a couple of times there. We've never looked troubled, in my opinion, once. So I'm not expecting for us to be troubled again. And I think West Ham, they're in that situation where they're going to turn up, they're going to try and be defensive, and they're going to try and counter-attack Man City. So they've got players that can hurt us. We've seen an Altovic for Stoke when he played for them, hurt us on numerous occasions. Uh, and I should imagine David Moyes will be looking for something similar again from him and from his squad. They'll need to be quick in the attack. They'll need to be strong, powerful, uh, try and bully us in a way. But the only way I've seen Man City really uh, be picked on this season is only against Liverpool. Even though we lost against Manchester United, it's only Liverpool I've seen that's picked on us. And that's through high intensity, quick paced, pressing for a short amount of time and putting the Man City players under a lot of pressure, which is when Man City have struggled this season. West Ham, they don't have that intensity, so for West Ham to go and bully us, it's going to be a little bit difficult. But they have got players like, um, like I said, like an Altovic, Andy Carroll, he could uh, also cause a few problems and set pieces. It's a typical lower... Uh, mid-table slash bottom half slash uh, bordering on relegation sides it's a game we've got that from now to the end of the season to be dealing with uh, and, and I'm confident that away from home it's normally quite difficult because the pitch is quite large it'll give us a lot of space to be able to work with so for this game I, I'm not too worried the matches against uh, Southampton is probably a bit more concerning the pitch is slightly smaller the fans are a little bit closer closer in if you get where I'm coming from whereas the Olympic Stadium or London City Stadium whatever you want to call it it's you're so big. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm I'm thinking that we'll probably win this game. I'm hoping that we'll win this game anyway. It'll send us on to 93 points. If West Ham win this game, then West Ham win this game and West Ham are safe. Then we'll see West Ham again next season. Uh, I'm not too bothered, though, if I'm honest. I mean, win, lose, draw. We've won the Premier League. We've got nothing to go for. We're just looking for records. If we do lose, though, it means we can't hit 100 points. So, bare minimum we need for that 100 points is a point from this game. Then we've got two home games to go at. So, uh, this is, in my opinion... Uh, a, a very 
not winnable, but a, a good game for us to be playing away from home. I always look forward to playing West Ham away from home. For at Upson Park, it was always a little bit difficult here and there. Uh, the London City Stadium, though, like I said, I'm, I'm I'm loving the fact that the pitch is so big. It's like playing at the Etihad. It is. It'll be like home for them. So there'll be a lot of space there for us to work with. So if I was Pep, I'd be thinking about going with our most skillful squad for this game because they'll be able to work the space uh, a lot better. So I reckon this will probably maybe finish. I'll go for 3-0 City. I, I, I've been thinking about where West Ham's goals are coming from and other than uh, on counter-attacks and set pieces, I'm failing to see where it's going to come from. And if Man City can get on top of the game and end up getting a couple of goals to show for the reward, I don't really see where West Ham can get into this game. Uh, it could happen. I've seen it numerous occasions this season where teams have had them chances and they've not taken them. So Newcastle away, I'm thinking, uh, in that aspect where the chances came, they just never took the chances and so we ended up winning the game. You know what I mean? West Ham, they've got to try and keep this as close as possible. I'm looking for us to go and score a couple early goals and move on from there. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. I'll go 3 0 City. If they do score, uh, then they score. There you go. I'll pop up my team prediction now for you. So I've gone for Edison in goal. At some point, we will see Bravo in goal. I'm almost certain of that. I've gone for Kyle Walker and Fabian Delph at right back and left back. Uh, Benjamin Mendy. I think he'll probably be given another substitute appearance. I'd probably start him in the match against Huddersfield, if I'm honest. We don't want to be rushing him back. He's can't come back, letting his legs grow, move him into the game. So uh, a longer cameo appearance from the substitute bench for this game. Match against Huddersfield, maybe start him and substitute him after 50, 60 minutes and let him regain his fitness at his own pace rather than just throwing him out in there. I've gone for centre-backs. I've gone for um, Laporte at the left side and uh, Vincent Company at the right side of central defence. I like Laporte. I'd like to see more of Laporte put Fernandinho because he's been suspended, so it should be nice and fresh now after missing the last two Premier League games. He's sitting in front of our defence. And then I've gone for Ilka Gundogan and David Silva. At some point, De Bruyne is going to have to be given a rest. Uh, I see no reason why Kevin De Bruyne can be given a rest in this game, really, and use him again. Um, maybe in the next game, I really do not know. I mean, I see no reason. There should be a lot of rotation there. Again, I've done it again for the attackers. Uh, I've put Bernardo Silva in along with Lira Sane and Gabriel Jesus to give Raheem Sterling a rest. You know, I'd like to see more of Bernardo Silva. I'd like to see more of Laporte. These are the players I want to be seeing in these games. I want to be seeing uh, Phil Foden getting more minutes. I want to be seeing Benjamin Mendy getting more minutes. Brahim Diaz getting more minutes. Maybe even a couple of other youngsters as well. Maybe Dahani, maybe Namicha. A couple of players here getting cameo appearances. You know what I mean? Give the players a rest. We could see more of Yaya Toure too. I wouldn't play him in this game. Like I said, we're looking for space, we're looking for high intensity from Man City. I'm looking for us to close them gaps down very quickly to try and make this pitch look very tiring and Yaya Toure won't fit into that. I've not a problem if he does start, it's just I feel like that'll be an area of weakness that they'll possibly target. But if that's football, we're all looking for opinions and that's my opinion. So leave your opinions and what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to let me know all your thoughts, like I said, in the comments below. What your team prediction, score prediction, how you think the game's going to go. Leave all them in the comments below. Don't forget to to check out my social media links to them there in the description below don't forget to also check out my second channel and my brother's partner channel doing mixology drinks i'll leave the links up to them at the end of this video don't forget to check out like and subscribe over there and don't forget to subscribe notifications on on this channel for daily contented videos and a lot more manchester city videos coming up too so i'll see you all again over the weekend have a nice day everyone and enjoy your friday peace ciao for now <laughs>